Hey guys, thrilled to be here. I'm Rob Tatro. Today we got a special guest on. We got a CEO and president of a publicly traded Canadian company, a company that's in the oil and gas sector. We got him right here with us, CEO of Surge Energy, Paul Coburn. Paul, thank you for being here. Excited to be part of it. Thanks for the invite. Yeah, it's not every day we get to talk about the man or the woman right at the top that's making all the decisions, and you are that person with respect to Surge Energy. Surge Energy is a Canadian company. Let's start with that. What is Surge Energy in 30 seconds? What do you guys do? Yeah, so we're a larger oil, public oil company, trade on the Toronto Exchange. We're 25,000 barrels a day. We're 87% medium and light oil, no heavy oil, almost no natural gas. And we're the only company I'm aware of in Canada that has two of the top four oil plays in all of North America is independently evaluated by multiple firms. So highest quality assets, I think, in the entire basin for oil. I'm just pulling up your stock here. Currently, roughly a $7 stock. We're recording this in late June. The entire sector is down. The stock is down 15% year to date. We'll get into that right now. It does pay a dividend. What's the yield right now? Yes, we pay a 48 cent dividend paid monthly, four cents a month, which is about a 7% yield today. And we have one of the lowest payout ratios in the country. Okay, so let's get into that. The stock itself and the industry as a whole has changed a ton over the last 10, 15, 20 years. And specifically over the last five years, as we saw pretty much almost a complete wipeout of the industry there when oil prices went negative in 20. 20, 2021? April 9th or something. 2020, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I vividly recall that day. My dad and I were sitting here and I took a picture of my TV because I, I didn't think I would believe it further yeah. when I saw negative people were giving people money to take a barrel of oil off their hands, which is absurd and tough to explain to someone, right? Tough to explain to someone who doesn't really follow the market much. What do you mean it was negative? How could something be negative? How could you... Kind of like negative interest rates, right? What do you mean I have to pay someone to keep my money? How uh, That makes no sense. How were you guys? Were you freaking out? What was your mindset that day? It is definitely by far the worst ever downturn in my 30-year career. And I would argue probably the worst ever downturn of all time. I'm sure there's 1986, I think crude went to $6 a barrel. That was probably ugly, but yeah, that was pretty, pretty ugly. Did you think you guys were getting wiped out? No, I actually always believed in crude. And what people don't understand is we're a world record demand for crude. We're already back through 100 million barrels a day, going to average 102, which means you got to exit at near 104, which is a world record demand for crude. And the highest rate of growth in any one year is this year. And the best demand numbers ever out of China, India, everybody is last month. It doesn't fit the rhetoric, Rob, that you and I and everybody else was sold in 2020, 2021. We're all don't need crude. It's so crazy to understand that we're at world record demand off the charts with the highest rate of growth ever right now. So I get that. I get today you're seeing the vision and you understand it. You're CEO, obviously you believe. But that day oh, where you... The worst. <laughs> how, how was it in the office? I can't, I was watching this here and I was like, wow. Like, I well, you were, you were even in your office. We are all, all working remotely due to COVID. And, right. Um, but just the rumors and the lack of actual information and stuff was hilarious when you look back on the lies that were told. Yeah. Um, anyways, it's thrilling. Okay, crazy yeah. times. Your stock dropped to a buck, I remember. Was it less than a buck? Our stock, we did the rollback on the acquisition two years ago, but our stock was down to 20 cents a share. 20 cents. Now that's pre-rollback, but yeah, right. would have been a buck 19 is what our stock dropped to. Crazy. All right. Let's talk about Surge, your company, before we get into the sector, because I do want to ask you questions about the sector, because I want to know what, I want to ask you what, what my wife is asking and what, you know, my friends are asking, which is, why should I buy an oil stock when I'm getting hammered all the time every time I buy one? And But I want to save that for later. Let's start with you guys as a company. So you're generating free cash flow. Let's start with what free cash flow means in your sector. Yeah, so free cash flow is what cash is left over after you spend the money you need to spend to keep your production flat. Or if you do have growth projections after your growth. 
So in our case, Surge has massive free cash flow. We've been using 80 crudes just under just over 70 this uh, this month, this day, today's spot trading, but we have about 160 million of free cash flow. Our costs of production are about 175 million. Our dividends about 47 million. So you can see the free cash flow after the dividend is massive. Sorry, um, those numbers again, your free cash flow is one. Our cash flow is 335. Our cost of production are 175. Yeah. So the free cash flow is 160 million and our dividend is about 47 million. So you're paying less than a third out of the free cash flow as a dividend. Exactly. Good for you. And that's one of the best lowest payout ratios of any oil company in Canada. Okay. The market cap of the company today, call it $700 million. So it's a $700 million company that's generating $150 million of free cash flow. So in less in four, four or five years, you're effectively getting all your cash out, right? The math is correct there. That's exactly what we're trading at. And usually we would trade it five times cash flow in a normal market over the last 30 years. I'd say four or five times cash flow is a normal market for a good company like Search. Free cash flow is a new way for people like yourself and others that are smart investors going, wait, tell me what's left over after your cost of production. Like any other bits, basically free cash flow is the new earnings in our business. Yeah. It's kind of like your EBITDA multiple exactly. is in the real estate space, or if you're buying a manufacturing company or whatever, yeah. or you, you can, you can buy that for eight times. Or you can buy it for nine times or six, six times. times. Yep. In your case, it used to be just straight up cash flow, but now it's your free, it used to be cash flow, which for you guys, five times cash flow would be double what it's worth today, right? 1.5 bill probably would be your market cap, something like exactly. that. Yep. Now the industry has gone away from that and they're using free cash flow, which is in your case, roughly half. Now, where would that situate yourself? Is that word called margin, cash flow margin, your free cash flow relative to your total cash flow? What, what's that called? You're roughly 50%. Yeah. So, well, we call it payout ratio, but yeah, it's almost exactly 50% for us. If our cash flow is 335 million, our cost of production is 175 free cash flow. So our payout ratio before dividends would be just under 50%. Okay. I always thought, I think payout ratio, I think what percentage of the profits get paid out in dividends. That's what I think when I hear payout ratio. Yes. Yeah, so you touched on it in another way. And then you can do another one, which is both capital and dividends. What's your payout ratio? There's numerous firms, you guys in particular, and others that have said we have one of the best payout ratios, lowest payout ratios of any oil company in Canada, which is really nice when we have a 7% dividend yield and a low payout ratio. That's one of the two ways I know to value a company. Yeah. So this kind of is obvious, but maybe explain it to us. How good is that in comparison to historical markets or something like, is that a good payout ratio today? And are those multiples reasonable today? It's an open-ended softball question for you. I love the multiples today because I'm a buyer of the stock. I buy Surge every month. I drip it with all, and I get my LTIP in Surge stock and I'm the third or fourth biggest shareholder of Surge. How about this? There's a study out done that shows Surge could double our dividend, which is 7% yield, and still have a lower payout ratio than many of our peers. Crazy. Uh, so Very exciting. So let me ask you this. Okay, I had Eric Natal on here and I had Rafi on here, both those guys, and we talked about the oil and gas sector. My job here is to ask questions. I'm not sure. guiding anyone in any which direction. People are obviously free to make their own calls, but I like having these types of discussions with people because I like bringing information out to people. So he brought up the fact that you guys are all done with your CapEx now because you're so fearful. The board is so fearful. And CapEx, for those of you who don't know, capital expenditure. So what used to happen in the oil and gas space, I'm paraphrasing, but you guys, companies would go out and say, oh my God, we got all this cash flow. We're going to do a $10 billion project. We're going to CapEx it over 10 years. And there goes all the profits for the next five years, but we're going to own a very valuable asset down the line. And now boards have said, enough of this. No more spending. Let's just make sure we're profitable. Let's just tighten up the belt here and see what kind of cash flow we can generate. So I've looked at the CapEx and you have, I don't need to tell you this. There's very, I feel like there's very little CapEx happening now in the space. Very little capital expenditure, correct? Yes. So um, normally companies like Surge and I've had them at, I've had four of the best oil companies in Canada 
with four different management teams. I've been lucky enough to have StarTech, Crescent Point, StartPoint Energy Trust, and now Surge. We would normally project big growth. The market would pay for it. And we'd spend probably 125% of cash flow. Nobody wanted dividends back then. They wanted the growth. So our cash flow is 335 million. We'd probably spend 400 million and grow by 15 to 20%. And you would pay five times cash flow for that growth. Now we're only spending 175 million. We have one of the lowest declines and we're bumping our dividend. We just bumped it 14% on that plus acquisition. So now we got a juicy yield, free cash flow, really low debt, and I could double the dividend. We're just plunking the free cash on the debt for another few quarters, but I'm trying to return that capital, Rob, to you and to other shareholders and myself through the form of dividends, share buybacks, special dividends, and we might add a wedge of growth, two and a half, three percent growth when crude gets back up over 80, 85 dollars. But right now, just pushing those free cash flow out to you through dividends, share buybacks, special dividends right now. And that's the sentiment across the industry. It's let's give shareholders that have suffered, let's give them their money, let's give them the profits, let's give them their money. So let me ask you this. This is my question. Lead up to this question is, okay, there's basically three things you could do. You could either increase the dividend, right? You can pay a special distribution, or you can buy back shares. Am I missing anything? What else can you do? Yeah, or, or I could add a growth wedge in there too, like two right. percent production per share growth. Yeah. That would be a bit of a CapEx you're saying. Exactly. Yeah. But let's assume you're not doing that right away. Okay. So now this quarter, this month, you're going to produce 155 million, sorry, a quarter of that, but whatever, call it pro rata 160 million of free cash flow this year. And you're only paying a third of that out. Obviously, you said you have debt. How big is the debt right now on the balance sheet? Yeah, our debt's just over $300 million, which is about 1.1 times current cash flow. But with that much free cash flow, it drops off dramatically. We've got a shareholder returns model. So as the debt drops off, we're going to bump the dividend and start the share buyback. So we just bumped the dividend 14% on the Interplus deal back in January, February. And as we hit the next debt target, which is probably Q1, so about two to three quarters from now, we'll be able to bump the dividend 100%. I wouldn't. You've seen what some of the other firms have got a little too aggressive, but we can bump it, probably look for 10 to 15 to 20% bump to the dividend in a couple more quarters. So as you said, oh, there it is. So there's the good chart that if it is being shared with everybody, uh, it shows the free cash flow yield and the dividend payout there. And that's the one that says Surge could double its dividend and still have free cash flow and have a better payout ratio than some of our peers. So how much of that? Okay. So you're paying, call it a third of it out to shareholders of that. We'll call it other two thirds of free cash flow. Yeah. How much of it? roughly is going to debt and percentage wise and how much is going to go to increase dividend and share buyback? Good question. So right now we are saying 25% is going to the dividend, 75% to debt pay down. And as we take our debt down from just over 300 million to 250, probably by the third or the second quarter, first, second quarter of next year, that's where we're going to move it to 50-50. So we could actually bump the dividend on 100%. I wouldn't do it that aggressively, but there's so much extra room there. And we'll start the share buyback as we hit the net. Then when we hit the terminal debt target about a year and a half from now, we will be able to triple the dividend if we want it. So let me ask you this. The market's not stupid, right? The market is, I mean, it, it, it's bleeding, but it's not stupid. So Assuming this dividend continues to go up bit by bit, I know you're not going to do it overnight, but let's say you get to seven, then you get to 8%. Imagine you were to double that dividend overnight. And I don't want to use that example because it's not going to happen. But let's say in tomorrow you had a 14% dividend yield. Would Is the market ready for that? Would they give you the respect you think you deserved? And would the stock price move up? Or would they be fearful that this is another problem coming and they're paying too much dividend and they're not safe and we got to be careful with this oil and gas sector? 
you're bang on. And that's why it's nice to put it up at five to, we just bumped at 14% in Q1. I do believe there's some of our peers that have increased their dividend way too much. And they're now having to stop their capital to maintain the dividend. And that's, you don't want to get caught in that. So we love the low payout ratio. We'd probably move our dividend up nicely, modestly. And then another good way, which you got to admit, you probably have been a shareholder, Tourmaline in the U.S. It's Tourmaline, Pioneer and others have started the special or variable dividends. Yeah. Those have worked like a dream. So maybe we tweak our base dividend up 5% and then give people a, there it is right there, the return of capital. We could tweak it up 5%, the base dividend, and then give a special dividend on top for quarterly, like Tourmaline does, something like that. If all things being equal, would you rather give 10 million bucks back to the shareholders or pay down $10 million via special distribution? Or would you rather pay it down 10 million of debt? You're asking a good question because the world changed. Everyone asked me, what's the biggest change in your career? I would say, without a doubt, it's the major chartered banks in the middle of the biggest downturn of all time, walking away from all of their counterparties, friends, business partners in the middle of the COVID crisis. Almost all of the main, we were lucky, national banks stood tall, but so many of the other banks left their clients in the worst downturn of all time bending into climate change pressure, oil price pressure, little Greta coming over on her little boat and everybody saying the oil industry is over. That's just not true. But that was the rhetoric. You should see a lot of these guys trying to get back into a surge syndicate. You guys were a big part of our wildly successful Interplus acquisition. We went out to raise 40 million bucks and one day the book was at 270 million. We big size the equity deal from 40 to 80. 31 of the top institutions in Canada came in on the deal. My point is capital is coming back to this industry for the right stories. And that was a wildly accretive deal. Nice bump to the dividend. But to go back to your point, we would raise the dividend, not cautiously, but judiciously. So what about a special distribution? Would you pay a special distribution? Exactly. You got it. Termaline's kind of proven. Maybe we bump the base dividend when we hit the second debt target sometime Q1 next year, which is only two quarters away. You bump the base five, six, seven, eight percent, and then give a special dividend out on the quarter, the way Termaline, Pioneer, and others have been doing specials. So we're liking that so far. Plus, we would start our share buyback not to use when the market's ripping. We would use it when the market's in dislocation. That's right. certain. Our PDP now independently engineered is 728 a share from Spruill. PDP means blow the company down and don't drill that beautiful, juicy 12 year inventory while we're trading in the sixes today. So we would probably have our share buyback going and maybe we have a firm called Canaccord helping us buy stock back daily here out of free cash flow. But right. then I'm not crazy when the stock starts going back to where it was a year ago, where 13 bucks when Russia invaded and oil ran. We are one of the companies in the country with oil price running. The number one oil and gas company in Canada, National Bank wrote this one, for investors to play when crude oil price runs is surge energy. Yeah, there's this chart says basically in using the 2024 implied share price at $90 oil, what does surge return in terms of a, and it's a double, it's a double on your stock is what this is saying. And a massive bump to the dividend if that was a sustainable price. Now, as I said, you raised a really good point. I might have to bring you over and work with surge here in our corporate development group. We wouldn't bump it 50 or 100% the dividend. We could at 90 oil. I could bump it 200%. We would just be cautious. I think the market would be all like all over you. I think the market would be like, oh, great. Seen this movie before. It's yeah, too we'll, aggressive. Exactly. Yeah. But doing, a, the, doing a base of six, 8% and then give a special. You special. Bet. I think yeah. the special is how to do it. I am not an expert in this. I'm not saying I'm an expert in this. 
I, this is just my intuition and talking to my clients and people that I know in the industry. I feel like the special is probably a better way to do it, but that's based on nothing, no research at all. So I know for a fact, I know what your opinion is on world oil consumption. And I don't want to get too much into that today because we had Rafi on and they laid out the case, the macro case for oil and gas, both increasing dramatically because of consumption, because of lack of supply, et cetera. So I don't want to get into that much, but I will ask your opinion real quick on that. I'll ask you one question and then I want to move on to the stock price because we are running low on time, but your opinion as to call it crude price over the next few years, obviously you think we're about to see a rally, I would imagine. Yeah. So all I'm seeing is there's 8 billion people in the world, 5.8 billion, China, India, Asia, and Africa, 5.8 billion, almost Three quarters of the world's population are going through their industrialization. Once an economy starts using crude, it does what's called an S-curve. You don't start using less barrels. You use exponentially more barrels. So India is where China was 15, 20 years ago. Those are 2.7 billion people combined. Then you have Africa and Asia in. It's so laughable and they don't care what little Greta says or others. They're going to get our lifestyle. They want the North American lifestyle. And Rob, you, me, everyone else in this continent uses 22 barrels a day of crude per year. That's our average. China's at 3.9. They want to get to 10. India's at 1.9 to 2. They've already stated both those guys, the driver of an economy during an industrialization Daniel Jurgen wrote the Pulitzer Prize winning book, The Prize. Is access to light, sweet, crude lets you go and get our lifestyle. Just look at it right now. Like I said, we've been spending for eight years half of what we were spending before. For eight years in a row, we've been underspending. So I'm very thrilled about us being, and I'm just saying this to you, it's that slide you mentioned. Pop quiz for you. Who is the top performing public oil company in Canada in 2022? Oil, not gas. Surge Energy. Wasn't CNRL, wasn't Suncor. 112% TSR. Total shareholder return, share capital plus dividend. My point is, we're probably the most well-positioned company, as per that National Bank write-up that you just saw, to deliver to you and our shareholders. Our net asset value is 22 bucks a share. Our total proved net asset value is 14. We're trading at seven. I love that. I'll come back on your show when we're trading at 15 bucks and tell you how good we are. But at 690 or whatever we're at, I love it because I'm buying the stock. Yeah. With the free cash flow that's being generated. Yeah. Where does that free cash flow start? Where does it go to zero? What does oil have to be for you guys? Uh, around $65 a barrel. We can still though, just over, just under, because differentials have dropped really low. We're probably right around $65 a barrel. Still spend all our capital and keep our production flat and pay our dividend. Right. Because this chart here shows that with the $60 oil, the same chart that we liked, that you liked here, it also shows a minus 40% return on your stock price. Yeah. And again, you know this and I know this. It's the share price. If oil goes to 60, it's already dropped to almost 62 a few months ago. The stocks get hammered. So we already know that no matter what you say or do, if oil goes to 60 or 59, every stock in this page is going down. So you're bang on. We're well hedged at 65. Just so you know, we put in a costless collar when crude ran to 120. So we've locked in a base of $65, which locks in our downside for a lot of our production. And we kept the upside up to $130. So yeah. I just think we're the best risk reward trade in the entire basin. Costless caller is a derivative strategy. Maybe real quick, you give up some of the upside above what, 130? Exactly. In exchange for protection below 65. You're, we're you're no more than 65 and we keep all the upside to 130. Yeah. Uh, we even bought out when crude dropped to 62, we even bought out some of the upside capping for pennies on the dollar when crude a few months ago went down. But a year ago when it rallied, we didn't not hedge. We hedged 65 by 130. 
you sell the right to buy, you take that capital, you buy the right to sell. It's two option strategies, otherwise known as a caller, that I took when I took my derivative specialist course Look at you. back in 2010. Let's get into one last piece of the pie here, which is why should clients own this stock? It's so frustrating, Paul, to own an oil stock over the last 10, 15 years, because if I pull up the chart and I, you're, maybe you're sick of seeing it, but regardless, we got to do our job here. Why would I buy this when I can look, look at the volatility that I have had as a stock owner over the last 25 years. It went up to 80, went down to 10 bucks, went up to a hundred, we're back down to a buck. And now like we're at seven. Oh my God, this roller coaster. Why would I do this to myself? That's a good question. It is a volatile sector, but the one thing that's happened that's never happened in a hundred years has happened. We're massively short of oil in the world, and we're at world record demand. And we've been spending for eight years, underspending almost half of what we were spending before. The beauty of it is we've changed the economic paradigm from a price-controlled oligopoly to a free-functioning market, and then capital starved it for eight years. It's not the Russian invasion of the Ukraine that caused oil to run. We now have a massive shortage of oil caused by chronic underinvestment, and we're back to world record demand. So you can say an OPEC has almost no excess capacity under the ground other than a million barrels or two that Saudi and OPEC have cut in the last while. That's never happened. We always had, in 1986, we had 16 million barrels of excess capacity just within OPEC under the ground. Now it's two or one. So I only bring it up because... You said, why would I want that volatility? Agreed. But I don't have to tell you the tech sector. I remember a chart from, I think it's Amazon, Jeff Bezos. Cisco. Yeah. So Jeff Bezos is on as a beautiful minute 30 YouTube video where he talks about his stock went from $6 to 110 US. And then it went back to six. He lost 90% of his value in 2002, just after the tech crash. He was walking around just, and he said, my business was going great. I realized I can deliver more than books to people and I'm expanding and the world looks good. Then where did stock go? $3,000 a share. And all I'm saying to you is the top companies, Surge is the top position, best position company who was a top performer in Canada last year, not because of me. I'd love to say it's me. We have a great team here, but we have the highest quality assets lowest risk, conventional, large oil and place assets, they wildly outperform deep, expensive, tight rock with huge declines, huge fracks that won't water flood. Well, that's not surge. So in addition to the best asset quality, as I said, in our Sparky, Southeast Saskatchewan, independently graded, two of the top four plays in North America, we're also the least risky because ours is all low risk, shallow, conventional reservoirs of water flood. That's why a person should own Surge. You ask, why would I want to own this volatility? And with Surge, you're getting a 7% cash yield while you wait for us all to be right with a really low payout ratio. That's why you want to own Surge. Basically, as long as oil stays at or above 65 bucks, you're going to get paid a very healthy dividend while you wait for it to get to 70, 80, 90. And then you're going to get a ton of cash flow. For you, you've got the story. And instead of carrying debt of two times, one and a half, two, three times, which was pretty reasonable for 75 years, in the next year, we'll be like 0.7 times debt to cash flow. Yeah. No, you're talking your total cash flow, not your free cash flow, obviously, when you're comparing debt. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy that they measure, they continue to measure debt on the total cash flow, but they measure pretty much everything else as a multiple on the free cash flow. Yeah. Good point. But that's actually too why we're, we set these disciplined targets and said, we have a really low debt to cash flow. We're even going to do it lower because we want to make sure when we bump the dividend to your point, we're doing it out of free cash flow. Some of our peers have been paying their dividends out of cash, out of debt, and we don't want to do that. Probably the best leverage is a two-way sword, right? So we talked about what happens if oil goes to 60 bucks, but if oil goes to 90 bucks, I think what I'm gathering is if anyone's bullish on the sector, and I'm not saying you should be or shouldn't be, but if anyone is bullish on the sector, this stock here is probably the best way to play it in Canada is the message that we're getting today. 
Good for you, Rob. You got the email. I love it. You got the internal Gold email. star. Gold I'll star. That, hey, guys, I'll just say this to you, Rob. I'm really intense. But if you think, I want to be the top performer in the country. Surge was last year. Not CNRL, not Suncor, not Interplus or whatever. Surge Energy, 112% TSR. I want to be this year. But if you think I'm the only intense one, go watch Mike Rose present. He's intense. He wants to be the top performer of the gas guys. Or Grant Fagerheim. Those are good companies. So I'm thrilled, but it's asset quality drives the financial results, not Paul getting all excited. The bottom line is I can wave my arms as much as I want. When you look at our asset quality, which has been independently evaluated as two of the top four plays in all of North America, I know of no other company that has a dominant position in two of the top four plays. That's what drives the financial results. Call me old fashioned, Paul, but I like seeing intensity when someone talks about his business, his or her business. Like I need to see that. If I want to invest with someone, I want to see passion. I want to see intensity. Like people always say about me, geez, Rob, you're so passionate about portfolio theory and portfolio construction and asset class allocation and portfolio strategy. And I guess that's a good thing, right? I love it. I live and breathe it. I want to be better at it every day. I want to learn from the best. I want to continue to optimize every single tool. I want to continue to read and swallow as much data as possible. Just be the absolute best possible. And if I lose that drive someday, I might as well get out of the business. I totally agree with you. And I've done it four times, built four of the most successful oil companies with four different teams. And I'm not sure I've ever been better positioned in an oil company as per that national bank chart to be the top performer again, like we were last year. Yeah, it's been a malaise here the last three, four, five, six months, summer doldrums and all that. But you saw the draw yesterday. There's not many 11 million barrel draws in one week that you can point to in your career. That's probably top 10 in my career. Weekly draws in the last 30 years just occurred yesterday and the market's yawning at it today. The Saudi gratuitous cut of another million barrels starts in two days. So what happens when that kicks in as well? The second half, Goldman Sachs is calling for $90 Brent exit this year. Yeah, I think I don't get too excited one way or another. I just, I do proper asset allocation. I want to own quality companies. I, I tend to not get too excited about day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month movement. And I would caution anyone who's watching this to know that if you're buying the stock, you're not hoping it doubles overnight or in three weeks. It's going to take some time for the story to play out because you guys are the sector as a whole is in the penalty box, right? There's not a lot of love for the sector right now. And that's harming stock prices across the board, not just you guys. So if you're buying this, you need a couple things to happen. One, you need oil to move a little bit. You need dividend growth slowly and continuously, and you need the market to start respecting that, right? Cause they need to believe that this is for real. And then you need time on your side and continuous quarterly reporting that shows that, yes, we only paid a third of our cash flow this month. And eventually you start to see that stock tick up. When you buy this kind of play, it's not buying cannabis or crypto or it's, you do have to wait a few quarters, right? Yeah. Unless you disagree with me. I don't know. No, one good thing. The companies that you mentioned, they don't generate cash flow. So in 2021, Surge had 100.4 million in cash flow. In 2022, we had 293.6 million up from 100.4 in one year. And we had a $98 million hedge loss in 2022. So it was almost 100.4 million to 400 million. That's what you get with surge. Another key thing, and I didn't get a chance to mention, but it's that point about the quality assets drive the results. Your PDP net asset value, which for you and other shareholders is What is the no-brainer level of this company? If I just blow the damn company down right now, what do I get? In 2021, December, it was $3.51 a share. The PDP net per share a year later, as not me evaluating it, the top firm in North America, Spruill, is $7.28. PDP, blow the company down net per share. There's no oil company even close to that in Canada that's predominantly oil like we are. So we've had record results and shocker, the market to your very good point, quarterly we delivered, and then our shares were up 112% in the top performer. So we delivered the results and the market paid up. I love your point. We're gonna deliver the results this year 
and I assume the market will pay out. I'll just share this real quick. One more definition for you guys. PDP, for those that don't know, just proved, developed, producing. Our reserves expected to be recovered from currency producing zones under continuation. That's a good definition there, right? Yeah, it just means blow the company down. What's yeah. the value? And it's a great for a base, like in a, you're a professional investor with great clients and, and a smart investor. So you generally people start from that and then build up. So our PDP now is 728 a share. That is rock solid bottom basement value. Then you go our total proof case, which is drilling only 250 of our thousand drilling locations is $14, just under $14 a share. If I drill 490 locations of our 1100 locs, it's $22 a share. Now that's scroll evaluation. So only half our locations valued is $22 a share. We're trading in the sixes, which I love. I'm a buyer of the stock. So isn't it, Rob, it's still buy low, sell high, right? That's the game. If my dad were here, he'd be like, you get the gold star. You understand how it works, Paul. And I'll tell you how great we are. Like when crude ran, when the Russian invasion happened, our stock in five months went from 368 a share to 1350. We're the top performer in the country as per that national bank write-up. And while we're all paying for the market to get smart and get recovered, as you said, Rob, we've been bruised. One little rally in crude and you get paid 7% yield right now while you wait for the market to wise up to oil prices running or whatever happens. So I'm actually thrilled with our spot. It almost gives investors, including me, a time to mop up more stock at these levels. This is my last question for you. Then we got to wrap it up. If we're sitting here in a year from now and we're having a conversation and I open with, Paul, what happened? Why did you have to cut the dividend? What price is oil at? We would have to have sustained oil prices below 65 for months. Uh, and oil looks like it's going to 90, 80, 75, whatever. We look really good at 65. At 70, 75, 80, we look great. At 90, it's almost ridiculous. Um, okay. So to your point, it would have to be sustained oil below $65 a barrel for months and months for us right. to change the dividend. That's a good answer. Thank you for sharing that. All right. I think this is great. I value your time, Paul. I'm so thankful whenever I get to talk to someone who's done this before, built multi-billion dollar companies. That's a pretty special what you've done. You've certainly demonstrated that you can do it. One quick point, and Rob knows this as well as it's public information because of Discovery Wells out there. I sent you a blurb. We have in our Sparky core area, which we've grown from 1,000 to 11,000 barrels. We have a big new Discovery multi-leg horizontal, 12 legs. It's all public. You can see the original Discovery. We have 23 sections locked up on it. Your analyst is aware of it. It's so exciting. It's a big new Discovery for Surge. We'll be talking about it in our Q2. It is all public, but it's none of it's really booked in our engineering. So quite exciting. All right. That's exciting. All okay. right. Thank you for taking the time today, Paul. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe, guys. Get your comments below. You agree, disagree with Paul? Something you disagree with? I want to hear about it below. And make sure to let us know what you think about the stock valuation as well. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. We will see you in the next video. Enjoyed it. Thank you.